my name is Felipe Borges. Uh, I work for Red Hat here in the desktop team. Can you guys hear me in the back? Cool. Uh, so yeah, I've been working on the desktop team for three years already, and for the last couple of years I've been working on GNOME boxes specifically, and that's what the talk is about. It's about my experiences running uh, GNOME boxes in a Flatpak sandbox, and I guess you are assuming that uh, it's the whole uh, virtualization stack inside of the, the Flatpak sandbox, not just running the, the GTK application and connecting to things abroad. Like, there is no requirement for the, for the host. So these are the basic uh, topics I'm going to approach today. And usually I would go for the motivation and get to the concepts afterwards. But uh, now you're going to understand, after I'm explaining the concepts, that the motivation is pretty much uh, the other way around. right? Like there was a technology uh, trend forming around the desktop technologies, Flatpak, uh, RPM OS 3, uh, Silverblue, and, S and containers technologies getting closer to the desktop. And this was something we are trying to catch up to still be available in, in the utopia future where there is no packages anymore and everything runs on containers. So first of all, uh, do any of you have ever run GNOME boxes or know what it is about? Cool. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we usually don't have this feedback from the user, so it's really exciting to see people using it. So for those who don't know it, it's like an alternative to VirtualBox or VMware for desktop users focused on the the desktop use case. So for somebody who is experimenting with a new distro, just trying something out on a Windows VM, it's not something focused on like scale de deployment, neither for somebody who has like a very deep understanding of virtualization. So if you're looking to that, Virt Manager is your friend. Uh, both of them are actually based on the same stack. So uh, there is no competition here. Like they usually have, they have two different use cases and one is focused on the users and the other is focused on advanced users and developers. So that's why we call it virtualization made simple. Boxes parts uh, like from, from the point where it assumes that the user doesn't uh, need to understand what's necessary to be set up to get a virtual machine running. So for them, it needs to be like a couple clicks and a lot of things need to be abstracted from the users. And other than virtual machines, Boxes supports remote machines. So you can connect to remote machines uh, either lo running locally or, or remotely, uh, over VNC, RDP, and SPICE. So it also replaces your, your client. You also can use it as a SSH client, so you can have a terminal embedded there and, and use it for SSH. So the main focus is this test drive experiment. So it's based on LibVirt, so it's just a front end for LibVirt. And it has this LibOS info at the core. LibOS info was, uh, is a library that has data on operating systems in terms of uh, which devices each operating system supports, which uh, requirements it supports in terms of memory allocation and things as such. But it can vary to all kinds of features that uh, certain operating system supports. And Boxes uh, uses the, the, the OS info tools, which uh, are able to detect that uh, an image, a uh, ISO or a disk, uh, match a certain criteria that qualifies it as an specific operating system and already configures this uh, operating system to use these certain devices. So you don't actually need to know whether CentOS 7 supports SCSI <coughs> adapters for disk bus or things like that because we have a database with this and this database is designed as such that there's some hierarchy so we know which operating systems derive from other operating systems so somehow we can cover a lot of ground in, to supporting things out of the box. Uh, we also have this great feature that is like a great sales uh, feature for us, which is the express installs. Uh, when Boxes detects that you want to install a, a specific operating system, which is like a known operating system, uh, for some of them we have these install scripts which are able to start up the machine based on data from your host and replicate them on the guest. So if I'm installing a Fedora virtual machine, in my Fedora host, you'd be able to create a user for me with my same user, my password, my profile picture, and uh, you would do the all install by, your, by itself. So we don't need to do the Anaconda process in your VM. You can just let it install and just go for a coffee. And when you're back, hopefully things are gonna work just fine. Um, so Box is like the application I've been working on and Flatpak. Uh, <coughs> A couple of years ago, applications in the desktop started to be patched as a flat pack, and Box was kind of left behind. 
because you can imagine that the complexity of a virtualization tool is not comparable to other common virtualization, uh, other common uh, desktop applications. As Owen has described, the complexity is also based on the amount of dependencies it has. So it's very easy when you depend on things that are usually part of a SDK or a, a normal installation. And uh, it is hard when you have a lot of dependencies. And Boxes uses libvirt, which uses camel, and then you have the spice display. We also support RDP, which means you have free RDP. So a lot of big projects uh, are dependencies of boxes. And uh, Flatpak has brought us, like you have heard a lot of Flatpak today, so I'm not getting into the, the details of Flatpak. And I'm going to save you both time and patience on this. But uh, the build orchestration actually is a great feature for us in boxes because I would say that half of the bug reports we receive from users are not our fault. And you know that uh, this is uh, something that a maintainer usually says. But uh, it's kind of true that in the traditional packaging management, uh, the people packing, packaging Livvirt and the people packaging Spice or Camel, they are not the same. Sometimes they're not even talk to each other. They're sometimes they are volunteers. Some distros are just copying some things from other distros. So when you have dependencies which are very well connected to each other and Camel has been built with a certain flag and then Spice needs to have this certain flag, it can become a nightmare. And the truth is that most of the bug reports uh, were pretty much saying something like Box doesn't support a certain feature and then I would dig a little bit and find out that Arch Linux has built Camel with some smart car support but it hasn't built Spice with this flag. So it's looking for the flag, but it's not built with the support. So this type of things that it's like a consequence of the, the Linux fragmentation, right? That uh, Jan has, has spoken before, and I don't need to, to get into it. Another great feature that Flatpak has brought for boxes is the distribution that some distributions just thought that it was too hard to ship boxes because of the whole dependency tree. So they're just not shipping it. And now with the distribution, we have it on FlatHub and it's as easy as, as it gets to install. It's like a couple clicks. And the Flatpak Sandbox uh, enables us to perform non-destructive actions. So we, since Flatpak also enables us to run multiple instances at the same time, the user can hack on it and uh, don't cause any damage on their existing virtual machines, neither on, the, on their host installation of things. So another concept that was around on the desktop before I decided to, to start working on getting boxes to work just fine on a, on a flat pack was Fedora Silverblue. Fedora Silverblue was designed to be the next Fedora desktop and it's an image-based operating system which means that the basic core OS of it is going to be a static read-only image and uh, everything on top of it is going to be containers. Of course, there's this technology which is RPM OS 3 that allows you to layer packages on top of it but you are defeating the purpose of having a a read-only image-based system if you are just layering stuff on, on top because you don't you lose the robustness of upgrades and and and, and you're just messing up with install, your install and not decoupling things and by having uh, operating system which is focused on containers first we are actually enabling enabling our users to have a very core solid operating system that does these robust updates and have their apps independent of of dependencies that we usually you would expect them to, to come in, a, in the, the core image of the, the OS. So uh, Fedora Silver Blue enables us to, to have a very reliable operating system and at the same time run unstable applications on top, multiple versions of applications on top and, and that, that's great for boxes because one of the biggest challenges is to get people to, to hack on such a big applications because they just need to build the newest stuff of everything and build the whole world, is, it's a pain. So you should definitely try Fedora Silverblue. There is a stand uh, outside. They have demos there, and they might help you out with everything you need uh, for, for Fedora Silverblue. And uh, so now we are finally at the, the motivation. So with the reproducible builds, I, I solved that problem with the cross-distro support. Distribution is not having boxes set with the right things. I can just literally go to the, the GitLab issues and say, have you tried the flat pack? And then they just try the flat pack and we find out that most of the issues are on the distro side. So then I can tell them to file these reports uh, downstream or just get the users to use flat pack. And most of them are just turning. <laughs> They're just like, oh, I'm gonna use flat pack from now on and not interested in on, on using the package one from my distribution. 
uh, the development process has also improved a lot because before we were using GH build, it like, so you are just building a different prefix, but you still need to build everything uh, locally and the dependencies, the runtime dependencies were things that you just need to catch up and discover why or when the build was failing and, and compensate for that. So now uh, we have CI bundles. So whenever you push something on, on GitLab, we use Flatback Builder to, cons to, to build a bundle which contains the whole, the whole build with Livirt and Camo and all. And you can just download it, double click it and test it. And, and this enables us to get designers to test the new stuff, uh, translators to actually try their translations because how many translators are actually building Camo just to see whether their box's translation is fine. It's, it's just painful. And the, the simultaneous installs. You can have a boxes development version installed and you still have your stable version where you have your VMs that you don't want to, to screw up with. So right, so the build orchestration. This is one of the hardest challenges for, for packaging boxes, getting all the dependencies to build with the right flags and stuff. So this is the moment where I felt a little empathetic with the packagers because it's really hard to build so much stuff. I don't know if I can actually get my... my, my code to show in that display. Oh, yeah, there we go. Also, now I don't see it here. Right, so this is the manifest of the boxes flatpack. This is the, the nightly version, so you see that the application ID here in the top has the develop prefix. Uh, applications... Oh, I don't know how GNOME Builder does it. <laughs> So maybe I could just open up in a terminal, because I know how to make terminals big. Yeah, but I don't know this keyboard. No. Oh. Yeah, but somehow it's eating my shortcuts here. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so I would describe it. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh, here I can see it better. Uh, so the, the application ID is unique, so if, if it, this build would have the same org.gnome.boxes, then you'll be seeing the same VMs you have on your stable version. But by appending this develop thing, I can have a, a simultaneous install that doesn't see those VMs. So when I run this develop version, I don't see the VMs that I installed on, on the stable flatback. So they, they have a, 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 a isolated container where, where the VMs are running. The libvirt uh, daemon is running inside the VM and it's, it's spawned when, when boxes is launched and then just sleeps down because there's debug activation for that. So we also don't, we also save a lot of memory about not running uh, libvirt daemon all the time in your Fedora Silverblood mm -hmm. because you just need it on demand. Uh, what else? Yeah, so here we have the, the, the finished arguments which are pretty much the permissions. And so far, Boxes has device, device all, which means that it has access to all the dash dev devices. And that's not ideal, and that's uh, something that I have in the section of further work of, of my project, <coughs> which is to use portals to be able to access devices, but we still don't have a, a working devices portal for, for Flatpak. But uh, it's gonna get there at, at some point. We need to just get in motion. Also, file system access here. This is mostly because we have this folder sharing feature that allows you to share some folders from the host and see them on the guest. And there's a file sh a chooser portal, but uh, it's for files, not for folders. So this is also something that Flatpak uh, needs to change to accommodate these changes. We need to have maybe a, f a sharing folder portal or something up to discussion. So let's get to dependencies. And so here we describe how to build the dependencies. You see here that we are doing some, some patching on this one here to correct some multi tools build things. Um, yeah, so a lot of them, different build systems. So I imagine that for a packager and understanding that these are the, the flags that are necessary for you to run boxes, but at the same time you want to build these things and get them working elsewhere for <coughs> other apps which depend on other builds. So having, delegating to the, the application developer all these Responsibilities actually enables us to do just what we need to do and nothing else more. So here we have tracker disabling a lot of things. So another topic of this. 
see Virgil rendering. Uh, we recently have uh, enabled uh, Virgil rendering for operating systems that support it. So you have OpenGL uh, acceleration in your VM, so you can run high performant apps, such as Photoshop and things like this. And here, finally, boxes. Uh, another aspect here, you can see some, these apps are sub-projects uh, which I have created for boxes to introduce new features on it. This one is a RDP widget and this one is support uh, the open virtualization format. So the flat pack also enables me to create sub projects which can be used elsewhere and ship them together here and I don't need to convince packagers to pack a new library or to update a library and things like this. These things are quite unstable yet so I don't, don't need to go back and forth with them because we just are in charge of everything from now on. Okay, so let me catch up where I was. Oh, there we go. So there are certain things that still don't work. Uh, you used to be able to detect that you connected a physical device and because you are using UDEF to, to detect plug-in uh, stuff. So if you connect a USB stick or something, the flat pack boxes wouldn't be able to see it yet. That's also something we need to, to, to handle with a portal. Uh, we now have a flat hub build. Uh, which means that you can go to flathub.org and download the last stable boxes. And we also have the nightly builds, which are automatically built every night from GNOME. So you can have the latest master comments. So if something doesn't work, you can tr try the nightlies and see if it's still, it's still broken. So for the work, this is what is remaining to acknowledge those if def uh, conditions. The network bridge. So far, uh, we don't have the network bridge between the VMs, which means that they don't see each other. They can connect to the outside world, but they don't talk to each other, neither to the host, which means that you cannot SSH into your virtual machine inside uh, your Flatpak sandbox. Uh, with the network bridge, uh, you're required to set, up, uh, to set up a bridge and also forward this file descriptor into libvirt, so libvirt can, can do its shenanigans. And that requires escalating privileges, and in Flatpak, that is something, that's something we don't want which is to, to escalate privileges inside the sandbox. So ideally, with the devices portal, we would be able to, uh, let's say, get network manager to create a bridge and then create a little helper, which the devices portal is going to use police kit. So you'll be able to type your password there and forward the file descriptor from the dev net tool or tap device into the flat pack sandboxes and from there on we know what to do with it. So we will be able to recreate the network bridge with that. But so far, uh, we are not able to perform network settings on the host system from inside the sandbox. I have some hackish ways to do it, but it requires you to set the, uh, the SUI ED bit on your binary and run it. And you don't want to tell users to install Flatpak and also run a, bin a privileged binary at the same time just to set it up, right? We don't expect boxes users to know what they're doing with the bridge network. So we want to use also portals for file system access. As I mentioned before, we can already drag and drop files into it because files are supported through the portal. But uh, directories are more complicated because imagine that you might have some scene links, uh, you might have recursive directories and things like this. Where we expect that with Virtio file system, which is a recent work, uh, we are going to be able to tackle this very easily by creating a specific uh, flat pack portal. And device access, imagine that you want GPU pass through or USB redirection. Uh, you'd be very interesting to have a portal that you would be able to decide which devices you want to expose to, to your specific virtual machines. And in the other way around, if you want to create some virtual machines which are air gapped for testing some malicious code, whether you're working on security and you want to hack, uh, that would be ideal as well. So this is future work. So yeah, uh, here I described, yeah, so we will pretty much just forward uh, the file descriptor and create a socket pair with it. And, uh, right. Oh, I, I kind of ran through this already. So, so pretty much we just need portals and uh, these portals need to be uh, like having bo boxes in mind that we will be able to forward something not just into the sandbox but from the sandbox expose this to, to virtual machines. So yeah, I guess that's, that's a good timing. I was planning to go, <laughs> oh, you got up. I was planning to go deeper on Flatpak, but I guess you saw already a lot of Flatpak stuff. So just a little bit before, I was planning to maybe run boxes. <laughs> Let me see. So I can just press play here. You can see the build here in the, in the footer. 
and it's going to run this unstable version of boxes. Uh, yeah, and that's how it looks like. It has this nice develop style, this nice black team that we like it. <laughs> but you can also change it if you don't like black. <laughs> but yeah, there, there, that's, that's how it looks like. We have this nice setup here where you can download operating systems. You can install free rel. So you just need to create an account for, for Red Hat to, to know how many people are using it, but it's a free rel server. You just click here, you're gonna go to some desktop portal and you're going to create an account for yourself and it's going to download and install RHEL for you. And it's gonna use the express install, so no Anaconda. And here you can connect to your remote machines. So I guess that's it, I guess, some time for, for questions, I guess. Questions? Okay, quick question, because I'm new to Flatpak. Do I get it right that Flatpak is a container? Yes, it is, and LCI container. Oh, he's asking whether Flatpak is a container, yeah. And what kind of container? Well, it's a OCI container, I would say, right? So it, it's compatible with a Docker container in this sense. And it just has the niceties for desktop apps. So it handles uh, desktop icons and putting the desktop files in the right places and making it easy to show in software stores and things. Okay. So if you want to pass anything into it, uh, you, you have to give it, give it the privileges to operate the devices, right? To pass it into the yeah, like enabling assembly loops. And yeah, right. The, the way it is now, it, it does not because we are just poking this hole in the sandbox. So the way it is now is just going having direct access. But we use have this portal in the feature that would uh, allow you to authorize or not to, to forward the access into the. So this is an ongoing work you already do for files. So if you want to move a file on and off. And uh, the GNOME settings panel is going to have in the future like this application panel where you can decide which application is going to have access to each devices or each files or each elements you want to introduce in there. So it's an ongoing work. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you.